So it's, called, it's known as Jet 4 flight really because obviously our, the aerodynamic control services don't work in this regime. There's no airflow over the, uh, over the wings or the uh, ailerons or your, uh, any of your control services. So uh, the way you control in this case is through a, a reaction control system. Uh, so on the, uh, the wing tips, uh, in the, uh, on the rudder uh, and underneath the uh, stabilator and then underneath the nose, there's uh, RCS ducts. So when you move the stick, uh, just like removing the uh, ailerons or the, the stabilator, it will shoot out a, uh, a pressure of air at 2,000 psi uh, to kind of move you around. It's kind of like a, a spaceship almost moving uh, from here to there, just translating via purely from the uh, airflow off of the engine. Uh, so that's how we'll come in. And this picture was taken. I was uh, sitting in a, in a cockpit, cockpit of a Harrier, uh, taking a picture of another Harrier coming to land aboard the, uh, I think this was the USS Tarawa, uh, but I've been on a couple, so I can't remember which specifically. Uh, slide. Uh, here's our primary missions. Okay, our bread and butter is to support the uh, Marines on the ground, so that's kind of what, our, what we pride ourselves on. Uh, and the Harrier is very suited to that because we can uh, we can operate from fields that most uh, conventional tactical aircraft cannot. So uh, we're close to the fight, and we can get to the fight pretty fast. Uh, Armor reconnaissance, you know, just taking out uh, surface targets. Uh, strike coordination with fire reconnaissance, just a little bit more complicated. Uh, but similar mission to armor reconnaissance, aerial interdiction, so going deep uh, into enemy territory, taking out targets, and then uh, anti-air warfare. It's not our main mission, but we do have a, uh, a pretty decent air-to-air -air capability, uh, carrying the M9 Sidewinder and the uh, A120 AMRAM missile as well. Uh, slide. Uh, some of our uh, major weapons, I'm not going to cover everything because it, uh, it would take too long, but uh, Lightning II Advanced Targeting Pod, that's, uh, that's kind of our bread and butter. Um, it's really made us a uh, very capable platform. Uh, it's got a laser designator so we can uh, laser our own uh, laser guided weapons. We can generate uh, very tight coordinates for uh, GPS guided weapons uh, with that. Uh, it's got a FLIR forward looking infrared so it lets us see at night uh, when the, uh, the naked eye can't see. Um, and it's got a 48 power zoom on the camera so you can really pick up targets very well. Uh, APG 65 radar, it's a uh, uh, air to air radar primarily, the same radar that's in the uh, F 18. And that gives us that uh, that air-to-air -air capability. Uh, GVU 12s and 16s. That's the 500-pound uh, and 1,000-pound variant of the laser-guided weapon. Uh, so uh, this came out. If you uh, remember the, uh, the first Gulf War uh, in the uh, early 90s, uh, when you first started seeing those be very widespread, you know the footage of, of those bombs hitting uh, very precise impacts. Uh, those those 500-pound and 1,000-pound bombs. Uh, GB38 and 32, those are relatively new, uh, fielded in kind of the uh, mid-90s. Okay, those are uh, the uh, JDAM variant, the 500-pound, 1,000-pound variant. And uh, with those, those are satellite guided bombs, so that gives us the capability to uh, employ weapons even when the weather is, is not good enough to employ a laser guided bomb. So for a laser guided bomb, you have to be able to see the target and, and laser it. Uh, the JDAM weapons, you can just drop it on a coordinate and it'll guide right to that uh, coordinate. And then the Mark 80 series bombs, those are just the, uh, the old school uh, Vietnam era, uh, but still in use today, just free fall weapons. Uh, Lightning II targeting pod makes makes them uh, extremely more accurate than they used to be, uh, but they're still just, once they come off the airplane, they're going where they're going, there's no uh, mid-course guidance. And then uh, the GAL-12, 25 millimeter uh, cannon, that, uh, it's actually not internal to the, to the jet, it'll strap onto the bottom, um, and uh, it's a very accurate uh, weapon system as well, and kind of a weapon of choice when you don't want to do as much damage as a 500 pound bomb would, for example. You can just fire 25 millimeter and still, still give the Marines support on the ground without uh, causing any more damage than, uh, than you want to. Slide. Uh, there's just some pictures, my next uh, five slides or so, and then I'll just uh, open up for questions. This is the cockpit uh, taken in Yuma. Uh, it's very uh, very user friendly for a single piloted aircraft, which is what it is. It, it can be difficult sometimes, especially at night. Uh, you know, you're flying formation, trying to uh, navigate and also employ weapons. So. Uh, they set it up for us to be as uh, user friendly as possible. Uh, all of our radios are controlled on this uh, up front control right here. Uh, our heads up display gives us all of our uh, altitude, airspeed, flight control information so we don't have to take our eyes down to see uh, what, we're, what we're doing, where we're going. Uh, our displays up here will give us our navigation information, uh, a moving map display, which is pretty nice. And uh, over here we'll either have the targeting pod up or a, a radar display for, uh, for air to air. Uh, our uh, throttle and stick, uh, we call it HOTAS, hands-on stick and throttle, or hands-on throttle and stick, I guess. Uh, it allows us to select and, and work all of our weapons and sensors without taking our hands off the controls. So that's what all these buttons over here do. 
Um, over here is the throttle, just like a normal jet, but the difference with the uh, Harrier, uh, right here you have the nozzle lever, so you can bring in the nozzles, uh, and those nozzles rotate from all the way aft to straight down to 90 degrees, uh, which will allow us to come into the, that hover and, uh, and land slower than a normal aircraft. Uh, ejection uh, handle there for the ejection seat, if uh, you're having a real bad day out there, so never had to pull out one so far, knock on wood. Uh, and, uh, a yeah, really high-speed uh, clock from like 1964 in there. <laughs> uh, let's see, yeah, that's kind of the, uh, the high points there. 